All right, everyone, we have to talk about what the New York Times is reporting on. And normally, uh, you just ignore the New York Times because 90% of it's totally fake, the rest is totally misconstrued, but they unwittingly uh, expose democratic dysfunction, a la the uh, Montana special election with Gianfort. Now, Gianfort uh, tackles a reporter, supposedly. At least at the time of voting, that was what was being said to have happened. It's not entirely clear what actually happened. Maybe he was provoked uh, physically. Of course, you can't just body slam somebody you know, because they're saying unkind things to you and you get angry. Uh, but if they attack you, yeah, you can self-defend. So uh, we're not exactly, <clears throat> I'm not sure that, uh, I think the jury's still out on what exactly happened. But it doesn't really matter because the uh, entire corporate media apparatus immediately jumped on the he's a nut uh, line and yet he still managed to win the election. And the New York Times write-up uh, on the sort of uh, the post-election fallout there is essentially that a split has emerged between the DNC, the, the, the party insiders, and the lay Democrats. That is, the lay Democrats wanted to pour resources into that race, but the DNC judged it was unwinnable. Of course, they didn't win. The Democrats so far have not taken anything in these special elections. They were hoping to take them all. They were hoping the possibility that they would significantly increase their support. They said, look at Trump. His popularity is under 50%. You know, he's not a super popular president. His presidency, to their minds, according to what they read in the corporate media, uh, supposedly was imploding. And the Republicans were uh, fast losing favor because of Ryan care early on, uh, no, no tax plan implementation yet the AHCA's kind of botched situation there, which it passes, it, it may make things a little better, a little worse, it may remain in stasis, we're not sure, it's, it's opaque, just like Obamacare. Uh, they looked at, for instance, uh, North Korea and so forth. They looked at all of these things, and they said, well, the Trump presidency is imploding, we're gonna win all of these special elections, and they haven't won any of them. And it points to a much wider dysfunction where the Democratic, the DNC, still has not given people anything to coalesce around other than we oppose Trump and we're not the Trump party. That is the only thing that they are pointing to right now. That and, oh, Trump care will be a disaster. It sounds a lot like when the Tea Partiers or any other group came out and said, well, you need to vote Republican uh, because Obama wants socialized health care, you know, even, even before it passes. Or when thereafter the Republicans run on, oh, we need to immediately get rid of Obamacare, and they keep trying to do that, and of course they keep failing. Uh, and it was a shit show. It didn't work. It wasn't a proper platform to run on. Trump, unlike Mitt Romney or John McCain, formulated a working platform that actually offered some degree of solutions to people's problems. You can talk all day about whether they're going to work, whether he's going to bother implementing them, whether he's not a corrupt orange Hitler, but he created a platform that worked, clearly, because he won. He swept up the whole Rust Belt out from under the Democrats. They're, they're still having severe difficulties. They still can't wrap their minds around why they lost. They keep telling themselves, they sit there nursing their wounds and remarking over and over. They're talking to themselves like Gollum, saying, we should have won, we should have won, it was so easy. It must have been that James Comey. It must have been those evil Russians. It couldn't have been our, our fucked up candidate. It couldn't have been that we never developed a platform and so all these down ballot Democrats uh, fared scarcely better than Air Hillary did. It couldn't be any of that. It's not our fault. People are just bigots. It's those damn white women or something like that. And then they wonder why they lose elections. Can anybody, anybody watching this video, can you name one fucking thing that the Democrats are currently running their political situation on other than Trump care is bad, Donald Trump is bad, or the Republicans don't care about poor people. Can anybody point out anything else under the sun that they're actually doing right now? I don't think you can. There might be the off Democrat that wants to tell, oh yeah, I, I want this new welfare program, or blah, blah, I want this tweak to health care or something. Okay, there are a few of them that are a little more cerebral. Is anyone in the DNC discussing that? Did, did Clinton discuss that? The only thing she threw in beyond I'm not Trump is I have a vagina. 
It didn't work, obviously. And the Democrats still, they, they keep rolling with it. They give her a pass. They give the DNC a pass. They want to blame it all on Russia. And they have no platform. And this is going to be a continuous problem with them. Look, we're months and months after the election, they still haven't really formed any form of leadership. They haven't formed a platform. They haven't developed two or three new major ideas that they can run on. If they don't do that, they're not going to win in the midterms. It's going to be just like these special elections. The Democrats will take a few seats in areas that have gone a little bit more blue. The Republicans will take a few seats in areas that have been going more red. They'll get they'll gain some more Rust Belt support potentially. All things even, they will be even thereafter. The Democrats will not take the House. They probably won't win back maybe one or two governorships or state houses. They might make sure that they get the Senate, <clears throat> but even that's up in the air. As of now, it's at best a 50-50 shot for them, whether they get those two seats they need in the Senate, uh, because there might be Republicans that take Democratic seats away from them. They're, they're, they want to run on, we're the anti-Trump party. That's not a platform. That's not an idea that solves any problem other than, okay, you're not Trump. Now tell us how you're different from Trump and what you're going to do to make America great again, to make the country solvent, to solve the health care problem that you dragged your heels on and didn't want to solve even when it was clear Obamacare wasn't really working. How are you going to solve the deficit? How are you going to prevent us from getting into more wars? Are, are you going to tackle the uh, issue of domestic surveillance that people are still pissed off about? Or cybersecurity because it seems that our government agencies can't keep a hold of all of their electronic systems. Are you going to address any of these things or are you simply going to plant your feet, say Trump is bad, please vote for us? Right now they're doing the latter. They're going to lose. If they keep doing that, they lose. It doesn't matter how unpopular Trump is. The other Republicans will run their own races. The Democrats will get tarred and feathered. And it's going to be funny. It'll be hilarious because it shows that for two additional years, they were in total and utter denial. Oh, we can do this if we just talk about how bad Trump is for a little bit longer. I'm sure that we'll retake the Senate. We'll retake the House. We'll have a super majority of state legislatures. Ha ha, we can do whatever we want. Trump is now powerless. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. If you think that Trump is a fascist, you're doing a piss poor job of stopping him. Because simply saying, oh, Trump fascist, Trump Hitler, Trump bad, it's not a platform. It's not how elections are run. And you, you've you already seen uh, proof is in the pudding. You threw $2 billion at Clinton's campaign, and she still lost. So it's obvious you can't pay your way out of this problem. You can't pay your way to beating Trump uh, or beating the Republicans, because they were uh, sadly outraised and outspent. It was, it was like a wash, and you still lost. And you said, well, we're decent. We're, we're progressive. We're the modern ones. You're like a throwback to the, to the caveman era, and it didn't work. Because the working class abandoned the Democratic Party. It's not going to magically come back aboard. Trump just has to do a mediocre job. He doesn't have to do a great job as president to, to retain the Rust Belt. Or to gain Rust Belt seats in the Senate or House. He doesn't have to do that. He just has to do a mediocre job. All he needs is for the recovery to continue as it was going to anyway. And he probably retains all that. That's the, that's the, the magical solution to his problems. Just sit by and do nothing. As long as we don't have another major recession happen in the next four years, he probably gets reelected anyway. There's probably nothing you can do about it. Those people will begin to attribute all of the additional job gains to Trump. All he has to do is, is if, he, if he does reformulate NAFTA, and, and negotiations are ongoing, failed to sign the TPP, <clears throat> wants to hammer some of these other countries, get some more jobs going, especially if he implements his new tax system. The Democrats will not prevail against him in 2020 if he manages to do that by, let's say, the end of his second year in office. It'll take a couple of years for the, uh, for the gains, for the benefits of that to be truly uh, remarkable in the flyover state regions, especially within the Rust Belt. It would take a couple of years. Uh, he needs to get it implemented. My best advice to Trump is to get your tax plan implemented as quickly as possible and probably give more relief to the middle class. Make it conspicuous that you're doing that. I know it may not add so much to the overall economy. It may even temporarily increase the deficit. 
But then when their purchasing power rises and they begin pumping that money back into business and thus back into the coffers, the problem will solve itself. You'll lose a little bit of traction for a very, very short time and then you'll gain a lot more and your popularity will explode. That would be my best uh, advice to Trump. Yeah, throw money. A lot of people think that when you throw money at the, the top tax rungs that you're throwing it to the 1%. They don't realize, and this has been a problem, Republicans have never properly made the argument that part of that is small business, a mom and pop store, an entrepreneur, someone in Silicon Valley who does investing. It's keeping the engine of the economy going. There's your entrepreneurs, there's your regional businesses, a lot, a lot of businesses that are U.S. only, a lot of U.S. firms that employ people within the, Uni the United States. They go overseas when they become multinational corporations and pay nothing. If you tackle that, you'll have so you'll run a surplus easily. You start actually taxing these retarded, whack-ass multinationals, you won't have any economic problems for the foreseeable future unless you have a depression. You'd be able to give a huge amount of tax, so you wouldn't have to tax the working class at all. You would you'd get rid of the payroll tax, get rid of any tax bracket that affects the working class cut the middle class taxes in half, everyone would think that it was like the 1950s again. They'd be like, oh, we like Ike, only Ike is now Trump, essentially. It'd be the nifty, it'd be, the, the, you know, the, the suave, swell era all over again with the manicured lawns and, and atomic paranoia, probably. The wonderful. You can accomplish this. If Trump does that, the Democrats have already lost 2020. They will lose. Uh, that would be my prediction. However, he's dragging his heels. He can't fucking do that. He can't keep dicking around about, uh, you know, uh, the things he's talking about. Oh, I'm going to go on a whirlwind world tour. That's great for your diplomatic credentials. Helps your with your core fans supporting you. You need to focus on taxes. You're the jobs and money president. If you keep focusing on North Korea, uh, diplomacy in Saudi Arabia, let's go meet the Pope. That's fine. That's it's part of your job, but you need to put that on the back burner. Get your tax plan through. If you have to throw some breadcrumbs to the Democrats to get a couple of them on board to overrun the never Trumpers, so fucking be it. Declare your intent to tax multinational corporations. Make your statements directly to the left. Address the Democrats on Twitter. The corporate media will run with it. Give them an olive leaf. A lot of them will come on board say, no, nah, these corporations should pay their fair share. I'm uncomfortable with the fact that, you know, Walmart or Samsung or some, some giant company pays very little and the mom and pop store pays 40% of its income. That's all you have to do. You can win over parts of the left. It'll calm them down. A lot of their protests will go away. Your popularity will rise. The economic engine of the country gets going. But the Democrats probably can't beat him even if he doesn't bother to reform the tax system. Even if he leaves it alone and keeps harping on North Korea and, and Saudi arms deals, he probably still wins re-election. There's the secret. Because his opponents don't have a plan to counter him. They haven't discussed anything in specific. They discuss sexism, racism, and being not Trump. That's not a platform for an election. That's about all. Peace out.